Within the Australian mainland, there are two active volcanoes. The last eruption from one of these volcanoes originated from Mount Gambier in 2900 BC. However, if you look across eastern Queensland, you can find a number of other dormant volcanoes which could erupt again. One of the most prominent group of features is a chain of three large lakes which are entirely volcanic in origin. Known as the Crater Lakes, they each represent highly explosive eruptions which occurred between 10,000 and 20,000 years ago. This video will discuss the Crater Lakes volcanic complex and mention what their future hazards are. The larger of the two Crater Lakes are located within Crater Lakes National Park in northeast Queensland. The closest major city to these craters is Cairns, which lies 46 kilometers or 25 miles to the north-northeast. The three volcanic lakes that I will be discussing in this video form a relatively straight line and represent a zone of recent volcanic activity within Queensland. These lakes are all considered to be what are termed Mars, which are essentially volcanic explosion craters. They are only a subset of a much larger volcanic field within Queensland which has been active intermittently for 7.1 million years. Known as the Atherton Volcanic Field, this larger volcanic complex contains 52 different eruptive centers spread out over an area of 1,800 square kilometers. In addition to shield volcanoes and Mars, the Atherton Volcanic Province also is responsible for numerous cinder cone forming eruptions. As an example, the seven cinder cones shown on screen are referred to as the Seven Sisters and formed via separately mildly explosive eruptions approximately 350,000 years ago. The reason why this volcanic field exists is rather obscure, but here is a leading theory. Recent scans have detected a low velocity zone beneath this section of Queensland. This seems to correlate with a broad but low intensity hotspot in the mantle which intermittently ejects magma into the crust. These eruptions seem to occur in sequences of activity which encompass a several thousand year time span. The most recent of these eruptive episodes began 20,000 years ago when a volume of magma traveled upwards within the crust until it was just beneath the surface. Eventually, the heat from this magma interacted with the body of groundwater causing it to flash to steam. Soon, the amount of steam generated became too great for the enclosed space it was in, thus generating a massive explosion. As the ground exploded upwards, pyroclastic flows raced across the surrounding forest, traveling several kilometers. Once the ash had cleared, what remained was a 61 meter wide and 82 meter deep Hypipami crater. This crater erupted into a thick bed of granite, causing very little of the surrounding rock to be vaporized and thus forming a steep edifice. Then, 17,000 years ago, a new batch of magma traveled upwards 23 kilometers to the northeast. This time, the magma interacted with a shallower body of groundwater, causing the resulting explosion to be more energetic. The crater formed by this explosion measured approximately a kilometer wide and has since been overlaid by a body of fresh water called Lake Barin. The most recent eruption occurred only 11,000 years ago when a similar eruptive sequence occurred 3.5 kilometers to the south. By the time this eruption had ended, the 840 meter long and 720 meter wide Ikum Lake had been constructed. It is quite likely that the aboriginals in the area directly witnessed these eruptions as their oral stories of the formation of these lakes is a close match to what actually happened given the scientific evidence. Overall, these three lakes will almost certainly not erupt again as they each represent isolated volcanic vents. With this being said, a future eruption could occur adjacent to one of these lakes, perhaps only a kilometer away. The odds of another eruption, whether it be a cinder cone forming eruption or mar forming eruption, is approximately 1 in 35,000 each year. Either type of eruption would create the need for regional evacuations within an 8 kilometer radius. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, if you wish to support this channel, consider becoming a patron on Patreon.